Hi, my name is James White, and I am the host of the RNP show. It's a religion and politics show, but this is a special uh, video designed to refute Dr. James R. White, uh, who is the host of The Dividing Line. Uh, his webpage is aomin.org, Alpha and Omega Ministries. Uh, he's a very intelligent man. I have a lot of respect for him, especially his work dealing with uh, Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, and here recently debating uh, apologists who defend Islam. However, him and I have a very clear difference of opinion when it comes to same-sex marriage. So, he did a long dividing line, talking about, or basically refuting, Matthew Vines in his video. So, this is a refutation of a refutation. Now, Dr. White, uh, in his video, said that the love of two men is not the same as a man and a woman. Uh, he uses the phrase mirror image a lot. Well, my reply to him, since I've been married for almost 15 years, is that no couple, gay or straight, is the same. See, the true truth is there's no such thing as this generic couple where there's a man and a woman and they have 2.3 kids and a white house and a white picket fence. That just does not exist. Every couple is different. And every couple has to negotiate what they're willing to do and what they're not willing to do in their marriage relationship. Um, some men actually stay at home with the kids, for example. That has to be something that a couple negotiates and I would say should probably talk about during their premarital counseling. Um, Dr. White says that if you only focus on the six negative texts related to homosexuality, you miss the boat. He's partially correct there. Um, now, in Matthew 19, got my Bible here, Matthew 19, we always have to look at the context of Scripture. Matthew 19, it says, when Jesus had finished saying these things, he left Galilee. All right, verse 3, some Pharisees came to him to test him and said, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause? And then Jesus' response was to quote the book of Genesis. He answered, Have you not read that the one who made them at the beginning made them male and female? And he said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. He's not dismissing the possibility of two men being in a relationship, Dr. White. What he's doing is he's talking about divorce. So you have to look at the context of the passage. Now, I've got a lot of material, and if I feel like I'm... A little rushed, I am. Uh, let's see here. Dr. White wants to replace same-sex relationships with other stuff. So he'll take, if you take out the argument, in his mind, if you take out the phrase same-sex marriage and replace it with other things, these other groups are using the same arguments. And he is partially correct. Uh, pedoph pedophiles, this intergenerational love stuff, uh, polygamy, bestiality. Uh, I'm going to talk in a minute how... Quite frankly, people like myself who are an advocate of same-sex marriage should, in fact, speak up against this. Um, the polygamy argument is very simple. Every, per every time in the Bible when there was someone married to more than one person, there was always a favorite. And when there's favorites, that's not good. So that's why we say two people, two consenting adults for life. That's the definition of marriage. Now, Dr. White says long-term monogamy is not the norm for homosexuals and the vast majority of homosexual experience is not monogamous. Well, the Christians that I have been around, uh, because I used to attend a church that was majority uh, gay and lesbian, uh, most of the people that I've met are monogamous. Now, are there people in the homosexual community that are not monogamous? You're right. But it's people like me, Dr. White, and people, ministers who are more liberal, that um, that's our job is to encourage them to be in a monogamous relationship. Just like you would say to any straight person that you need to be in a monogamous committed relationship. Uh, Dr. White does complain that, Dr. that Matthew Vines does not define love, and you do have a point. 
and I will and I will bring that up here in a minute. Um, now, how do you tell gay men to be monogamous? I'm going to answer both of those at the same time in, in just a minute. Uh, let's see, Matthew Vines wants a family. Dr. White says that there's only one way to start, and then he brings up this whole thing with the German Shepherd, which makes no sense. Um, but two men can adopt, and two women can adopt, because quite frankly, we have had situations in our society where people have had sex, they have children, and they don't take the responsibility of raising those children. So, I think it would be a much better situation for a young boy or young girl to be raised in a household with two loving adults than to be stuck in foster care for the rest of their childhood. Um, the whole mirror image thing, um, everybody's different. In in fact, he he um, he refutes himself later on by saying that you know about two lesbians that one of them is a little bit more uh, butch than the other. The truth is, Doctor White, any relationship, gay or straight, the two people involved are different. And you're right about one thing: relationships do test your uh, selfishness. You're absolutely right about that. I've been married for almost fifteen years. You have to, to be in a relationship. You have to be willing to serve the other person. You have to be willing to uh, be sacrificial. Love is sacrificial. I think we could both agree on that. Um, and yes, when children are involved, you definitely have to be unselfish. Uh, of course, he also says, uh, once again, two men are not biblical love. The problem is, the longer you listen to this video, the more he starts to repeat himself. Um and then, of course, he goes back to Matthew 19, which I've already talked about. Um, now, the two men is biblical love. Biblical love. You're right. Matthew Vines does not define it. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Let's see here. Verse 4. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. This is the standard, Dr. White, not just for to, um, a man and a woman, but any relationship should be defined by this. So if you want to talk about the definition of love, it's right here. 1 Corinthians 13. That's the definition of love. And yes, Matt probably should have mentioned that in his video. Um, what was the other part? Uh, it was something else I wanted to refer. Oh yeah, how do you tell gay men to be monogamous? Because of 1 Corinthians 13. It says, love is patient. See, if somebody is not monogamous, what they're doing is they're involved in a relationship, and if that person doesn't want to have sex, they just move on to somebody else. That's not how relationships work. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious, or boastful, arrogant, or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. There are times when you might feel in the mood, or as the Cialis commercial says, when the moment is right. Well, your partner may not feel that moment at like you do. So guess what? You need to wait. Because it's not about, can I have sex tonight? It's, who am I with? And who am I going to express myself sexually with? I'm committed in a relationship. So if my partner is not in the mood, then I'm not going to do anything. So, how can I insist that gay men to be monogamous? Because, I just knocked something over. Because biblically, we are to be patient, loving, kind. So, that's how. Um, let's see here. Uh, the Bible doesn't mention intergenerational love. That's not exactly true. You see, 1 Corinthians 6, 1 Timothy 1, uh, the word arsenokoites and the word um, malakos are together. Now, Dr. White's an expert in Greek. I am not. Uh, I've showed this in a previous video. Uh, these two words, for some reason, Paul uses them together both times. Why does he do that? Because the top one refers to the 
um, in his opinion, refers to the active partner. This one refers to the passive one. Not necessarily true. In my opinion, the top one, the arsenicoites, refers to the adult, and the malakos refers to the kid. Because in Roman culture, they did practice uh, pedophilia, and it's disgusting, and it's wrong. And so those passages in 1 Corinthians 6, 1 Timothy 1, they're not referring to... Um, they're not referring to homosexuality. They're referring to pedophilia. So, uh, now Matthew Vine says sexual orientation is a new concept. And then Dr. White comes back with that scripture is normative and inspired. And I would say 1 Corinthians 13 defines all relationships. So, I understand where Matt's coming from, but he needs to understand that 1 Corinthians 13 encompasses same gender relationships as well. So, and then of course, Dr. White, he got into this thing about quality and context uh, that Matthew had said in his video. What he's talking about, Dr. White, is the quality and context of the relationship. And, um, and of course, Dr. White had to go off on a tangent talking about, well, there's no such thing as high or low quality adultery. That's because you don't get it. You don't see that these two... There are two, two people who want to be together for the rest of their lives. And scientifically, we know that homosexual males have far less testosterone in their body than heterosexual males. Look it up for yourself. So, if that's the case... Oh, by the way, isn't it funny that how 3 to 4% of the population tends to be homosexual? Or lesbian. Uh, so are we going to tell all people to stop making babies because we are trying to somehow rid the world of people who are LGBT? So I will say this in closing. God doesn't make mistakes. People are, in fact, born with a sexual orientation. So uh, although Dr. White does make some good points, uh, he's missing the mark here. So, for more information about me, you can go to PreacherJames.com. I do need to update my website, so hopefully I'll get to that later on tonight. I hope you have a fantastic evening. Uh, please understand, by the way, uh, this is not a personal attack against Dr. White. He is a great guy. He is a very intelligent man. Obviously, we are on two different sides of the spectrum. and uh, But I hold him in high respect because he is a very intelligent, educated person. So, hope you have a great evening. Take care. God bless.